Hi, my name is Julia Silge, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this screencast, we are going to use this week's Tidy2 dataset on chocolate ratings. Chocolate, one of my favorite topics. Um, and we are going to walk through how to train a couple of models with tidy models and compare them. This screencast is actually a good fit for folks who are um, newer to the tidy models um, set of packages. And we'll walk through um, how to use a new R Markdown template that is in the tidy models meta package to kind of like get yourself started with an analysis. So let's do it. Okay, let's learn something about chocolate. Um, and also uh, something about how to use tidy models. So in the latest um, release of tidy models, there is a new template. So uh, what I've done is I've gone to file, uh, uh, yeah, file, new file, new R markdown, and then I'm, I have all these templates here from the um, packages that I have installed. And one of the templates from Tidy Models is this template called Model Analysis. And what this lets you get is a, um, a uh, an R Markdown template that helps us know um, kind of like uh, how to get started. So if I open this up and then I can, um, I'll save it here, something, you can see my <laughs> memes. Um, let's call this chocolate ratings um, here. So um, what I've done is I've opened up this R Markdown template. If you never used them before, what they have, uh, a template offers you a way, um, an R Markdown um, set, you know, of like template here for getting started with something. So this one, as you can see, uses the Palmer Penguins data set and then walks through a um, like an opinionated, you know, explore your data, build your models, evaluate your models, and shows us how to um, uh, how to get started here. If you know, if you look at what this is, it's like an opinionated guide on how to structure your model analysis here. So um, it doesn't fit all um, use cases, but um, it provides some structure for how to get started. So um, let's see here. Well, what, uh, first, I'm going to change the title. Here, chocolate ratings, and I am gonna um, add something here. Um, I to do my um, make my plots look more how I want them to. So this is a personal um, package. Oh, I also need to let. I'll just load all of the tidyverse here, and here, and then I can do theme set. Theme Plex, which is a, a set of uh, like a personalized plotting um, theme that I have. Um, so that, that's kind of like a minimal, you know, kind of thing to put up here. And then I can get started. So um, I'm not going to spend, so spend a ton of time changing the text, um, this sort of text guidance that we go here. So I'm going to, but I am going to show how to. Um, how to change what goes in here. So let's let's um, read in this chocolate data set here. So we've got, you know, a couple thousand rows. We've got information on where the chocolate came from, um, where the bean came from, um, the percent cocoa, um, and this most memorable characteristics uh, column. Let's take a look of that here. So this is some kind of encoded like thing about the ingredients. But I think what we're going to do today is talk about um, tidy models uh, and just look at this most memorable characteristics um, column. So we have things that are brief fruit note, earthy, nutty. And then we have things like burnt wood, earthy, choco. Yeah, which I don't know. <laughs> is that cocoa? I'm not sure. Unrefined, sweet, metallic. Sounds bad. Um, if we find one that like is higher, strong spice, intense pepper, you know, like, like all these tasting notes for the chocolate here. So that's what I want to, what I want to do here in this, um, kind of getting started, uh, kind of walk through is show how we would connect the rating to the most memorable characteristics, like which ones are, um, uh, which which ones push it to higher ratings, which ones push it to lower ratings. So let's, uh, okay, so we've got our chocolate and let's start now on our exploratory um, 
our, our EDA, our exploratory data analysis here. So first, let's um, uh, do um, just a histogram of that rating. Um, whoops. Like so. Um, and you can see here that, and, and you could tell that when we looked at this over here, right? Like the ratings come in bins of 0.25. So it is, um, is this really continuous? Eh, I don't know. Not, not really, right? It's, it's more like um, they can't have any value in there. Um, see, we've got, we've got a pretty nice shape here. It is a skewed a bit to low, like, you know, it's skewed over here so that most chocolate has high ratings. There's, you know, fewer that have these low ratings over here. But um, so those are some kind of some caveats to talk about, like, what is this, you know, or about this distribution? Is this um, really, <clears throat> um, you know, this may pre present some challenges in our modeling. But I think I think I am going to treat this as a continuous variable. Um and uh, move forward with modeling. So now let's look at that that's variable that has the words in it. So let's load the tidy text, whoops, tidy text package for some uh, EDA for text. And let us just take the chocolate, let's say unnest tokens. And let's tokens two word from that most memorable characteristics um, variable there and let's call this um tidy chocolate like so and then we can um you know just look at the most common words so let's say count word sort equals true like that so um the most common words that when we talk about when these um people who are judging the chocolate or rating the chocolate, um, the words that they use uh, for in that most memorable characteristics column, cocoa, f sweet, nutty, fruit, roasty, mild, sour. So these, these sound like chocolate, which are, which are good, right? Um, and let's, let's do another uh, exploratory um, plot where we say we try to get at that question of like which of these words are more associated with high ratings and which are associated with low. So let us um, take that tokenized data set. Let's group by word. I think there are so there's there's only um, uh, you know 500 or so unique words used and then let's uh, let's do this so let's say n equals n so now we know how many um, times each word is used and let's say the rating equals the mean rating like that so now we know so how many times was accessible misspelled use <laughs> one time um, and here's the min, mean rating and whatnot so we can see these uh, that that um, yeah, what's the highest right here? Add, not, and then the lowest that we have around here is like alkalized, which is probably bad. Um, all right, so let's make a plot with this. Let's put that um, N on the X axis, rating on the Y axis, and let us make some points like so. Um, I'm going to make them midnight blue, one of my favorite colors, and let's make them so they don't plot on top of each other. All right, so let's try this. Okay, it's looking good. Uh, as is common in language, in natural language, there are a few words that are used a lot of times and a lot of words that are just used a few times. So let's put a um, log scale on the x-axis like that. Um, so these are all the words that are used just once, two, three, four. So that's why those are, um, uh, what happens if we jitter them? Like nothing. Okay, we won't jitter because it's on a log scale, I guess. Um, great. Uh, let us, let's add a horizontal line at the mean rating. So geom horizontal line like this. Um, let's make it um, dashed gray and whoops, a little bit thicker. 
And then where are we going to put that horizontal line? At the mean. So we say y equals intercept. And let's take the mean of the chocolate rating like that. So there we can see the mean, which we can, so we can see which ones are above and below. And now let's put some labels um, on these, on these um, words. So let's put it on top of the points like this. So I'm going to use geom text. I could try to use like, um, uh, GG Repel, the GG Repel package, so we see all of them, but I'm just going to use Geome Text and keep it fairly straightforward. So I'm going to say AES, a new aesthetic just for this Geome layer, label equals word, like this. Um, and then I'm going to make it so the fonts match. Here I'm going to take, yeah, this for my theme. And okay, wow, it's too many, right? Like way too many words. Let me make this bigger. Um, so what I can do here is I'm gonna say check overlap equals true, like that. So now no words are gonna get um, uh, over plotted. We just will throw away the, um, the word that comes later in the alphabet if they're gonna overlap a little bit. And then also I think it might be nice to, to not have them exactly on the pop points. We could do that actually and just leave the points off and do something like this, which looks pretty good. I like that pretty well. Um, or we could put the points in and then um, do the, the justification. So like if I say V just equals top, that moves them so that they are um, top justified and then we can do um, H just equals left to kind of move them off to the side a little bit. All right, so what we have here, we see that we're above the mean rating when things are balanced, complex, cherry, berry, rich, creamy, and we're under the mean when Oh, it's interesting that very is there. Very means it's bad. <laughs> Bitter, chemical, cardboard, pasty, cloying. You know, this all does sound pretty good. And then here are the words that are just used one time. Clingy, unfixable, extremely almost. It's interesting to me that the um, adverbs are um, on the downside, not the, not the upside. A cardamom, appealing, misspelled, accessible again. Okay, all right, so that looks good. So this is like our uh, exploratory data analysis. And um, anytime you do any kind of modeling um, analysis, it's super important to understand your data, to um, spend some time digging into it. Um, now let's move on to modeling. So um, I've got, uh, so this is all set up for the example data set. So I'm going to put in my chocolate. I'm going to stratify, whoops, stratify by the outcome here. And I'll do the same thing down here. So this, so this first, the first thing we do whenever we um, get ready to build a model is to think about the data that we have and how are we going to um, uh, spend that data. So think about this as spending your data budget. You have a certain, um, whoops, this isn't right. This is, should be trained. Um, so we have a certain amount of um, data and we have to decide how to split it into testing and training. So this is the data that we will use for um, uh, you know, uh, training models, tuning models, tr comparing models, and then the test set, which the, what we use the chat test set for is, um, is um, estimating performance on new data. So we do not use this at all during the process of building our models. Whoops, what happened? I need to add library tidy models right here. Okay, there we go. So we have, um, 
uh, a training set, a testing set, and then we create resampling folds from the training set. So the these folds are what we can use. They're like simulated versions of the training set. I'm using cross-validation here to create folds. And in each one of the folds, we have this much data for training and this much data for um, estimating uh, performance. So this is all from the training set, but it's kind of like we're making little versions of training and testing splits so that we can, um, uh, for all of these splits, like use them for uh, estimating performance, um, if we needed to tune something, if we needed to compare. All right, next, let us start about, um, let me add something here, because um, before we talk about model specifications, models, before let's, um, let's create, let's set up our pre-processing. Um, the example here in the, our markdown template has only, has very like simple pre-processing needs, but um, tidy models allows you to have really flexible pre-processing with a lot of different kinds of um, transformations that you might need to do. And we remember, are, let's look at the training set. We are gonna be using the rating and the most memorable characteristics here. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to transform this um, set of characters that are um, describing the chocolate into features that can be used in a machine learning algorithm. You know, I don't wanna, um, I wanna separate all these, all these out here. So let, what we'll do is we will use um, a recipe which um, for pre-processing. So our recipe will start with um, what, whoops, do we want to um, predict using what? So we make a, um, we make a, um, an R formula here, and then I will say, whoops, recipe, there you go. Um, and then for the data, I'll use the Chaco train. So what's going on here with um, this data is that this, the training data here is being used to, um, um, to find, like, see, hey, what is this data like? What columns are there? What types are there? And then um, I'm going to actually add, it's a, use an add-on package here. So uh, there are the core tidy models packages, which you can see here. And then there are add-on packages um, that will help you for more specialized tasks. So some models are in add-on packages. Um, here we're going to use a package that is set up for um, pre-processing that is needed for text. All right, so the first thing we will do is we will to tokenize our um, string here, our character, our text data that we want to use as an input for our modeling. Then I'll do some, I'll do a token filter, which what this is, is um, uh, it says how many, um, of the uh, of the tokens, do I want to keep? So I will, if we remember this plot, I'm I'm basically making a cut somewhere. Like um, uh, I'll use all the common ones and then go down and then decide where to make a cut. Because things that you know, words that I've only seen one time, I'm not going to be able to use very effectively in a model. Whereas words that I've seen, you know, ten, a hundred times, I'm. 10, 10 seems a little low, but words that I've used more often, I'll be able to use in the, in the model. So let's say, let's keep, there were like 500 or so tokens total. So let's keep the top 100 for this, um, for this model. And then I need to weight these. Um, I can weight via term frequency. So that means like um, counts compared to how long the document is. I can weight by TF-IDF. Let's do that. Let's do that. That'll probably be pretty good for um, for this for this data set. Although I pro I could do TF actually. Maybe that'll be better. So let's look. Let's show and see what that looks like. Let's call this the Choco recipe, like so. And okay. And now if I look at what this is right now, I I have not uh, I have set up my pre-processing, but I haven't. I haven't done any computations yet. Um, 
so this first uh, this first step is specifying um, a recipe. Um, th think of it as saying like, aha, here are the ingredients I'm using, um, these variables. And then here are the steps that I want to take to get re this ready, my ingredients recipe, my ingredients ready. To actually um, do the estimation, I would prep the recipe like this. So prep on a recipe is analogous to fit on a model. I'm taking some training data. Notice that now here, it really, you know, it didn't say, it said the name of the variable, but after I've prepped, it says that it is trained. So it's gone, it has tokenized the, the words, it has filtered down to the most common 100, and it has computed term frequency. So if I want to make sure, like see what happens, I can bake the recipe, and I don't need to bake it with any, uh, so bake for a recipe is like predict for a model. And I'm going to say new data equals null because I don't, um, I don't, um, I'm, I just want to get out the training data again. So let's see, what if I do like this? Ooh, that's pretty long. Let me, I think this is better. So what's happening here is um, I have now 101 variables, whereas before I had two. Um, and these are all term frequency all the way down here. And we still have the rating. So let's see if I, what if I do skimmer skim like that? Okay, so this tells us for here are all the words that are in our data set: um, dairy, mild milk, orange, smoke, smoky, and so forth. And this is the mean. So you can see which ones are common or less common. They're you know they're all complete and so forth. Uh, let's just do let's just look at it one more time like this, just look at it and notice it's zeros. We have a lot of zeros and it didn't use that word. And then there's like a one when it does use that word. So we basically have made like a whole set of, um, a whole set of like dummy or indicator variables is, is effectively what we have here. All right, okay, so to, to emphasize, doing something like this is not necessary, strictly speaking, for building a model, um, because what we're gonna do handles prep and bake under the hood, but I did it because I wanted to make sure that it worked and I wanted to look at what was going on. All right, now let's talk about our model specifications. Um, here, this is a... Um, a logistic regression model, but we have, um, we're going to be predicting this as a, as a, um, a numeric value, like a continuous value. So let's, um, let's keep the ranger um, model. So um, ran random forest models, let's, we only have a, Let's, let's um, make that down. Um, random forest models do not generally um, perform super well with um, text data, but this is like this really short text, a small vocabulary. So let's give it a go and see how it does. Um, next, let's make a, a support vector machine, SVM linear like this. Um, this has, this doesn't really have, this doesn't have any tuning uh, value. So we can just, um, we can set the engine lib linear, and then we can set the mode, which is also regression. Whoops, regression. Okay, so I'm gonna have two two model specifications here. So we're gonna do the same pre-processing for both of these, and then we'll have two different models we're gonna try out. Typically, when you're working on a machine learning problem, you don't have a ton of reason ahead of time to like know what kind of model you should use or um, what will be the best. So it's all so we often are in a situation where we're trying multiple. 
Um, so this uh, models in tidy models have three characteristics um, that we use to define what a model is. The first is um, what what is the like algorithm, how you describe the, um, the type of model. So that's like support vector machine, random forest, logistic regression. The second part is the engine. So this is like the... Um, this is like the computational engine you use to fit the model. So, um, you know, you can be different R packages. It can be, um, you know, something you can get it from Python in the, in the situation of um, Keras, you can, you know, use Spark. Um, so it's like, what are we doing? In this case, for both of these models, we're actually using the defaults. So you don't, if you're just, use, if you're using the defaults, you don't have to specify. Um, notice that, like, I didn't say it was range but it went to Ranger because that's the default here. And then the last thing is um, the mode. So the mode of a model describes um, what uh, basically describes the outcome or, or like what kind of modeling problem you're working in. So there's a classification, there's regression, and we're currently working on um, uh, uh, censored, um, uh, like, um, sorry, uh, models for survival analysis here. So we have like a uh, censored mode as well. Okay, so now, um, so ch definitely check these out if you haven't before. Now let's build a model workflow where we combine the model specification with a data preprocessor. So we are not gonna use a formula. You can, but we are not. So let's put, um, so let's you make the Ranger workflow. So let's put our Chaco recipe here, our Ranger spec, and then let's make a support vector machine workflow here. And so first we can say the um, preprocessor and then the um, model specification. So we've got two workflows now. So um, like, like here we did and we went through and used a recipe um, because we, our feature engineering needs were more complex. We had text that we needed to be able to get ready for um, modeling so we couldn't just use a simple formula. All right, so we have our models, our, our model workflows. So a workflow is a, um, a workflow is a way to think about a model analysis, a model that you need to fit or tune or compare um, that encompasses both the pre-processing and the model. Because typically um, we, you know, we really need to um, estimate or fit or train the, the pre-processing steps together with the model to be able to understand which one works best. Okay, so like in this example, these models don't have tuning parameters. Um, so we, um, we, I have, you know, other videos about tuning, but um, today we do not have um, any tuning parameters. So we can just go ahead. I'm going to add um, parallel processing here to make this run faster. Um, I am going to save the predictions for each one of the resamples that I fit. Um, so I'm going to put that in here and let's, let's change what these are. So we've got chocolate here, the folds here and here. And let's put the workflow SVM and let's ranger, ranger. Okay, I think that should work. So let's run this. Um, notice how fast <laughs> the support vector machine fit because it's a linear model and then the ranger model took a bit longer to fit. So let's, um, we can see like what's in the results here. So this is, um, the results are a tibble that have, hey, for every split, you know, what fold was it called? What metrics did we get for that particular um, fold? And this will be if anything went wrong. And then here I'm keeping the predictions, but I'm keeping the predictions because um, I said, I, so I told it to. It would not do that by default, but you can definitely do that. Okay, so now that we have that done, let us, um, whoops, right. I don't have something called and did not fit any logistic regression models. Um, uh, so let's let's look at this. So the support vector machine has um, uh, the support vector machine has this um, 
uh, RMSE and this R squared. The Ranger looks like it did slightly, it's very close. So R squared is higher, RMSE is lower. So it is a, it is just slightly um, better. Um, and uh, so we can decide, you know, like, is that amount of improvement good for us? It's very, you know, it's a very, very small amount of improvement. And we can do that um, and decide which one is more appropriate to our use case. Um, let's, uh, let's just visualize this um, here. Uh, so that we can um, see it. So, so this is a regression model, not a classification model. So we're gonna, we are not gonna use an ROC curve here. So instead we will say SVM, let's put that here, SVM. And then, um, so what this does is it, uh, we, we pull out the predictions for every resample. And then what we will do here is, um, Let's plot this. So let's put rating on the x-axis, prediction on the y-axis. Let's say, uh, use color for the ID. And let's uh, do points. And um, we will want to facet wrap, facet wrap with um, this variable here so that we put them like next to each other. Like so. Okay, let's see how this looks. Okay, so let's add a few things. Let's add the um, slope equals one line. And, all right. And let's, um, let's use chord fixed. Whoops, I was like, that's why that's not right. Okay, and is there anything else? Uh, and also see the ratings here, we're at these different, um, you know, at 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. So we can say, we can change point to jitter um, to make this look just a little bit better. And I think if we say with equals 0 0.5, it will fill up the whole space between them like that. Okay, so this, you know, gives you an idea <laughs> of like, you know, like we said at the beginning, like um, we did not, like we're not able to predict this super well, right? And if you saw that R squared value, you're like, wow, yeah, that's that's not so great. And, and it it's true. So what we're doing is we're trying to predict the rating only from those words. So this gives us an idea of how accurately um, we are, you know, how, how good a job we can do of that, of that, um, prediction. And you can see, you know, visually, like there is very little difference between the support vector machine and the ranger, uh, which we saw also when we looked at the metrics. If you're, if you um, uh, are wondering about the RMSE, um, so that stands for root mean squared error. And this is on the um, scale of the original the outcome. So this is the rating. So um, uh, this is how precisely we can predict the, a rating. Um, you know, the rating went from like one to four and we were using just the words, you know, the root mean squared error is point, you know, three, five on the order, on the scale of that, um, on the scale of that rating that we have. Okay, so we're almost at the end here. Let's uh, just talk about these last things. So let's say that we wanted to use, let's say we wanted to use a support vector machine because it trains faster and it's linear. So what we can do here is we can use the function last fit. So last fit fits one final time to the training data and then evaluates on the testing data. So like it says here, notice this is the first time we have used the testing data. Um, uh, we have not touched it when we've been comparing models. Um, and what the metrics in here are metrics on the testing data. So we can see here if we have, you know, done much overfitting. It looks like we don't really have much evidence of overfitting. It actually did a little bit better on the testing data, but it's smaller, you know. And then um, we would... Uh, there, yeah, let's see, Choco test. So what we can do, uh, this. so this final fitted object looks like 
of the resampling, except it only has one resample, the test train split. It's got the metrics, the predictions. It also has this workflow. So if I extract that workflow, what I'm doing is I'm saying, this is my, this is my um, fitted trained workflow. So it is, that is something that we can then save, use later, and you know, we can predict on it. So like if I, you know, go in here, it's going to give me predictions, you know, for all of these, I can do, um, you know, several at a time, and it will give me all the predictions for this model. And that, so that's pretty much it. I guess let's do one final thing um, here. Since this is a linear model, we can get out the, um, the coefficients. So if I extract the workflow here, and then I tidy it, what it does is it gives me, for each of these terms, does it push the estimate up or down for the rating? So um, let us, so let's group by whether it's positive or negative. So estimate greater than zero. Um, and let's take the top um, 10 for each of those, so now I've got 20. Oh, that bias shouldn't be there. Let's, that's the, um, the intercept for the support vector machine. That means the same thing as intercept bias, like that. Okay, so these are the top words that push it in the negative direction and the positive direction. And I can, um, let's ungroup, and I can um, make a quick plot here as we finish up. So I'm going to, to make the plot, I don't need all this stuff. Let's remove it. Great. And then just a nice quick bar chart, estimate on the x-axis, term on the y-axis. Let's make the color like that and a geome call like so. Um, and let's just real fast um, put these in a nice order. And there we go. So we've got we've got this plot showing us um, you know what our model is doing. Um, so these are the um, the words that are more from low ratings, more associated with low ratings, bitter, off, vanilla, interestingly, um, chemical, burnt. Those do sound like very bad chocolate. And then on the positive side, we have what, what drives the rating high. Um, complex, brownie, berry, cherry. That sounds pretty good. All right, so we used um, feature engineering for text data, a random forest model, and a support vector machine model. And we talked about how to get started, how to train these, how to evaluate them and compare them, and then explore our results. We learned that um, creamy rich chocolate is good and um, pasty, um, you know, chemical chocolate is bad. Um, uh, and you know, this, this particular model, it doesn't have the greatest um, performance, you know, in terms of how, how accurately can we predict the rating of the chocolate. But, you know, like that's, that's probably to be expected given the, you know, little bit of uh, predictor data that we were using. Um, it is a great way for us to explore and understand how to um, get started with tidy models, how to build predictors with text and how to um, approach uh, modeling analysis overall. I hope that this was helpful and I'll see you next time.